I dropped in one evening to congratulate Wendy on her senior examination success and to ask her what she had in mind for the future. Like many girls and boys in her position, she was somewhat undecided. Look for a job? Lots of her friends were doing that. But some of them were going to the university. Wendy asked me, as a university student, to tell her something about the university, what it was like, what it could do for her. Rather a large order, but I promised to do my best. What is the university? Well, to some it may be the buildings, such as the medical school near the general hospital or the dental college near King George Square. Perhaps the old buildings at George Street where the university began half a century ago. Or it may be the new buildings at St. Lucia situated on a magnificent site covering 242 acres. The grounds include six sites of approximately five acres each for the university residential colleges. It's easy to see why college residence is regarded by many as embodying the very essence of university life. To others, the university means the people who work and study within these buildings. The Senate is the governing body of the university and is presided over by the Chancellor. Or, in his absence, the Deputy Chancellor. The Vice-Chancellor is the administrative member of the Senate and is seen here in conference with the Registrar and other members of his senior administrative staff. Consisting mainly of the full-time professors of the university staff, the Professorial Board is responsible for the organization of the teaching and research staff and is concerned with the general conduct of courses of study, research and examinations. Each of the faculties, arts, science, engineering and so on, is headed by a dean. But within each faculty there may be several departments each of which in turn may be headed by a professor and staffed by lecturers, teaching fellows, demonstrators and technical assistants. In addition, there are several hundred full-time, honorary, specialist and part-time lecturers. And of course there are many other people, typists, clerks, tradesmen, janitors, who contribute to the smooth running of the university. And finally, of course, there are the students themselves. At school, your teachers see that you learn so much each day. But the university assumes that you have learned how to study for yourself. You are guided by the teaching staff in seminars, a kind of round table discussion. 
In lecture theatres, of course. By demonstrations, such as this one of the Tesla coil. Or this one of the burning of steel wool after it has been dipped in liquid air. By actual work in the field, such as the practical study of geology. Or perhaps of botany, zoology, or geography on the barrier reef. To a large extent, you make your own discoveries and do your own research. To this end, the university provides you with laboratories, equipment, libraries, and other facilities which enable you to track down facts and figures and opinions on your chosen subject. Let's take a quick look at some facet of the work encountered in the various faculties. The Faculty of Arts, for instance, includes the Department of Classics, and here we see students expressing their own opinions in a classic seminar. The Department of Languages uses tape recorders for training and practice in pronunciation. While appreciation of art is among the many subjects discussed in philosophy. And this test, connected with Piaget's theory of intelligence, is one of the many used in the various branches of psychology. Geography may call for a field trip. And there are also departments of history, English, music, mathematics and divinity. The Department of Physical Education fulfills an important function in university life. Besides training specialists in the teaching and practice of physical education, the department caters for the physical development of students. Lecture courses include subjects such as anatomy, biology, psychology and education. And there are also practical exercises in gymnastics, aesthetic and folk dancing, and major and minor games. For those students unable to attend lectures in person, the university provides an unusual service by offering certain courses through its Department of External Studies. Lecture notes and study guides are here being assembled for posting to every part of the state and even to places overseas. Of course, it isn't all study. The University Sports Union comprises nearly 25 different men's and women's sporting clubs which means a wide range of choice for students of both sexes. Here we see some, but not all, of the many sporting activities. On the social side, there are men's and women's clubs, debating and dramatic societies, religious and political societies. There are also affiliated bodies, such as the various faculty societies and associations. Just as one example, here is the drama group, rehearsing Coriolanus.
and these activities may carry you far afield. For instance, a football team may travel interstate or overseas, or the choir may attend an intervarsity festival in Melbourne. All these activities are controlled by the University of Queensland Union, to which every student belongs. It looks after the interests and acts as the official voice of the student body as a whole, and produces its own newspaper, Semper Floris, as well as other publications. The University Regiment is mainly an officer training unit for undergraduates, comprised of four companies and a field engineer troop with headquarters at St. Lucia. Similarly, the University Squadron gives undergraduates an opportunity of training which will fit them for service as officers on the Air Force General Reserve. Of course, Commemoration Week is the signal for celebrations that include the Commem dinner and dance and the procession. grand climax to your university career, the degree ceremony. And as I described it, I knew that in imagination, Wendy could see herself receiving her own degree. The outward and visible sign of her enlistment in that great army of those who strive unceasingly in the search for truth.